Hi, welcome to 2020 Tasty Treats with Gourmet Quilter. We're having some fun with some foundation piece blocks. We're doing 20 different blocks. There's a diagram here. There's a whole lot more information on my website on gourmetquilter.com if you're interested. And there's patterns. You need to register and, and purchase the patterns. But we're doing a block a day for 20 days. And this series that we're doing are all foundation piece. We've already done eight. So we're on to block nine. So this is kind of fun. What we're doing this time is a ladybug. So it's done in two segments of foundation piecing. So we're stitching onto the paper. So these are the two segments that we'll be making. Now, mine's not exactly dotty like a ladybird can be. You could use a dotty fabric. You could draw dots on. You could sew buttons on. You could applique dots on. There's lots of ways of having dots. I'm just making red. I will put my buttons or dots or whatever they are on a bit later. So I just thought I'd show you how to do the foundation part. So if you've registered for the pattern, you'll have one that you can print out like this. Um, you can check the sizes of the blocks too, by the way. There's a little one inch square box you can check to make sure your patterns are the right size when you print them out. Um, we're going to roughly cut them out, so I've already gone ahead and done that. We want a little bit beyond the dotted line so that we can trim it back to that dotted line when we've got all the fabrics on it. And I've actually already gone ahead and made the head. The head was simply a piece of the dark colour and then two little corners and a strip and two side pieces. So nothing terribly hard. That's the foundation piecing. We've already covered that in other videos. This time I thought I'd show you how to do uh, the wing part and things and we're going to be coming around making it look as if it's a little bit rounded even though it isn't. So to do that we need to start off with piece number A1 then we're going to put two and three on which are the main wing pieces and then we start doing the background which starts giving it that shape that we're looking for. So I'm just using a it's just a temporary glue but any glue stick will do and just a tiniest dab just to put this center piece on so that it sits there Oops. Um, nothing very much in the way of glue. We don't want a great swab of glue because we want it to be able to be easily removed later on. So I'm just positioning that so that it's fully covered. I can check that it's fully covered by flipping my paper back. I can check here I can do a little fold line because we're sewing things on an angle and they always make things a little bit harder to calculate when we're working a little bit back to front like we are. So I'm actually just going to press both of those whoops, lines that we're going to stitch. And we put our wings on. And what that also tells you is that that piece behind is large enough to go behind the seams that we're going to do. So now I've got this piece here. I've got to put piece two on next. So these are my two and three pieces, the wings. So what we want to do is make sure that that piece is going to fit there. So I'm going to fold that over on that stitching line that we've got. I can bring that piece over as well. Right sides together. And I can put this piece on here so that I know I'm going to be stitching along that line so there's enough there for a seam allowance. And that this whole wing part that I can see on my pattern here comes around here is well and truly covered by the piece of fabric behind so that it'll flip over to the right amount. So I think that that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to move that a touch. Open that back out again. And now I'm just going to stitch along that line that's there. So I'm starting just a little bit beyond the line. So we're coming up to a fairly fine point up here. Stitch to the edge of the seam allowance. And I'm going to fold it back on that line again. And I know that that area there I can trim off my seam allowance. Approximately quarter inch or just slightly less. And now I can press that. So nothing new about that. This is what we've been doing for our foundation piecing. I just thought I'd quickly go through that. I've got to put the other wing on now so I might go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you how to start doing some of that shaping. So I've gone ahead and sewn the second wing on so already it looks like something. 
So now what we want to do is start sewing, so we've got piece one, two and three on, so we're going to go on to piece four here, which is just a little tiny wedge triangle and then five and six and seven. And by doing it this way in little stages, it ends up giving us what looks a bit like a curved edge. So I've got my pieces cut here, ready to do them. They're a little bit oversized, but it works better that way. I've already done some folds in my pattern along the lines that I'm going to be stitching. So they're all kind of already there so that I can start positioning the fabrics. So for this one here, it's just a short line and I know that it's about there. I can bring that red with me as well and just position it on there. Remember the larger part needs to be away from where we're sewing. But I know that if I sew along this line here, there's going to be plenty for this little tiny triangle wedge here. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that and show you how this all works. So we're working with quite a bit of bulk with that red there, but it doesn't really matter because we can just trim it away as we get through things. So I'm stitching just a little bit beyond the ends of those lines, the actual line that we're stitching into the next little section. Not very far, just a little bit. So I'm going to fold that along, just along that stitching line there, and just the same as we've been doing, we can just trim off that large amount of red that we really don't need there. And then this little piece, so we can bring that back out again, and this little piece we can press out. So this just takes a little bit of time, but because everything's kind of done in numbers, it does help. So that was piece number four. Now there's a slightly larger wedge triangle there piece number five, so I'm going to press that, I'm going to bring that over, bring my piece of fabric over, and the same thing, I know that that's a long narrow wedge, so I know that by doing that, as long as I'm covered everywhere, I just bring it down a little bit, my triangle will fit. So I can put that back down, I can go to the sewing machine, and I can stitch that line knowing that this piece of fabric is big enough to peel back as that, as that small wedge there. And the same thing, we'll just bring that across and we'll trim as we go. Fold the paper out, press that piece over. So that's all looking good so far. You can see we're just starting to get this sort of little angle thing going on there. So now we've got to do piece number six. So the same, I've already got that fold in there. Any stitching that we've done into the next little bit, we can just pull that down. We can bring the fabric over on the fold as well so that we know where we're going. Put your fabric right sides together, remember. And now I just need to see where that piece number six is, and it's more down there than it is up there. Okay, remember it's flipping out from behind. I'm just trying to find my seam line. So that's along there. So I've got plenty there that's going to flip around. So I'm going to stitch piece six on. I always go just a little bit beyond the start point and at both the start and finish point. Even though I have to tear the paper, it's better to have it stitched into the seam. Just, it's always a good idea to just double check things when you put flipping things around before you cut them all off because, like I said, you don't want to be unpicking any of this. And we've got a little tiny stitch like that. Just going to trim that off, press it. So by just going around in little small wedges, we're ending up with something that looks very much like a little curved shape. And when we do it on the other side, it'll emphasize it even more when it reflects like that. So now we've just got another piece here, piece seven. It's a slightly wider wedge, so we just have to be a little bit aware of that. So we're just going to 
piece six is a very narrow wedge. Just got to get my that's it onto that fold. I'm going to fold that over with it, and I'm going to put that there and just make sure. And that's folded over it, that's all looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that in place. This time I've gone right out to the edge of the seam allowance. That's going to come around. We can double check that it's sticking out way beyond. So that's really good. So I'm just folding my pattern back, trimming off that seam. So you can see there's definitely a little rhythm to get into that helps with this sort of fine work. Press it. We're nearly around this little curve. And then I can go back and do the other side. So that's looking pretty good. We've done piece seven. Now for piece eight, it's really just a triangle. So what I've done is actually cut a triangle. And same thing though, you still want to do that little fold. You can bring those bits over with it. Position that on a triangle, but you do just make sure that it's going to be large enough to cover all the piece behind. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and stitch that on. And we should have that whole little section or side of that section done. Again, just before you trim it, it's always worth just double checking. It's looking pretty good. Trim that off. Guess what? We're going to press next. Bring the paper out and the piece. And there, we've got that sitting there nicely, so I'll be able to trim all that down, but not until I've done the other side. So the next piece to do is going to be a little bit down the bottom because we're just having it so that there's a little bit of white or background all the way around and so once I've done that I can put these same pieces all the way down this side in exactly the same way so I'll go ahead and do that and then we can finish the block off by putting it all together so I've gone ahead and I've sewn all my other pieces on and I've sewn one of my corner triangles on there, so I had put the, the little base piece on so that it's a little flat bit across there and we did all that and I've gone ahead and done all that and now there's just this one last triangle and I thought I'd do that with you so it's the same sort of thing that we've been doing we just need to put a fold in along a line that we're going to stitch along and because our pieces of fabric are kind of stitched into that segment we definitely want to bring those over with it and we probably do anyway I've cut a triangle a little bit larger than we need here to go across so that I can position that and I can more or less see the sort of seam allowance area that I'm going to have. But I just still need to double check that everything is sitting right and from my side I can see that it's not. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit that way and that way. I don't want to take too much seam allowance because the triangle won't be big enough. But I think that's looking pretty good. I'm not sure if you can see there's a regular sort of seam allowance amount there. So I'm going to take that to the sewing machine now and then we'll trim that off. So you can always just double check. If your pieces are a little larger, they're sticking out beyond. So quite often you can see that that's going to work and it's going to be just a bit beyond so that there's enough seam allowance there. So I'm starting from right outside the seam allowance area. So that's my triangle stitched on. I now need to pull this back so that I can 
trim that seam. So any stitching that we've done into that little area, we just need to tear that paper so that we can get a nice fold all the way along there. And then trim our seam off. I like to go just under a quarter of an inch, but not much under, just under. And then I can press my fabric out. It's definitely cleared all that seam allowance, so when I trim the whole block it's looking good. So that looks pretty good. We've trimmed all that little, lots of little layers there, but it's all sitting quite nicely. So there's the ladybird. We're going to have to trim all that block and then give him a head. Poor guy, needs a little head. So just trimming along the dotted line. Which is a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line. And so now we just need to pop his little head on. So that's really just a straight seam across there. So I might, I might go ahead and do that and then we'll give him a quick press and you can see him finished. So I'm just pressing that seam open and here we have a delightful ladybird who I've been calling him but I'm actually thinking maybe it's a her. And I was also thinking that it would work for any kind of beetle. You could make these different colours and things. It wouldn't have to be a ladybird style beetle. If you wanted to pop some little feelers or legs on, you could either stitch them, embroider them, or use a, a permanent marking pen. If I'm using a pen, I use a, a Pigma pen, which are permanent on fabric. Or you could stitch them or not, if you just like that plain look of the ladybird, just the way it is. So that was block nine out of our 20. So I'll pop that up here with the others. I think we're having a pretty good run with all these blocks. They're looking pretty exciting. So that was foundation piecing block nine. We have another 11 to go only. So I'll see you again with block 10. Thank you.